Sana First of all, there is electronic mail. This is the method of sending letters electronically to anyone on the internet. All you need is a software package sitting on your computer and your own electronic mail address. You get your own email address when you first join the internet. You choose the first part of the address, in this case, purple tea. The second part of the name, which comes after the at, is the name of your domain. That could be your service provider, such as Dircon, Demon or EasyNet. It could be the company you work for or your university. Outside the US, co indicates commercial access. AC means academic. For countries outside the US, the address has a suffix like UK. Australia uses AU and Germany uses DE. This address means that you can communicate with people worldwide. For the cost of the call to your local provider, you can contact someone in Australia or Antarctica, provided they too are connected to the net. We just got here a few days ago and uh, right now I'm emailing to people back in Canada. My brother at Bradford, we talk on email more than we do on, um, on the phone, you know, because it's cheaper, obviously. Back at Siberia, Elizabeth will demonstrate electronic mail in action. Email is a very easy program to use. I just click on our email button. It asks me for my username. Click OK and I'm presented with my mail window. I want to read my new mail, so I choose File, Read New Mail. I have something about Darkwing Duck and Chipmunks. I have no idea what this might be, sent to me by a friend. So I'm going to have a look at it. It's a picture of Darkwing Duck. <laughs> it's pretty silly. I'm going to reply. Um, I click the Reply button to reply, and it gives me an Options window. Ask me whether I want to include the original message in reply. I don't. I just click OK and send it back. Um, that was a very silly message. P.S. I'll be able to meet you tomorrow afternoon. Because I'm not going to see this person again until then. And I know that they're on their email now because I just received a message from them. And then I just move over here and I click the send button. It gives me a little window that shows me that it's sent. Email works in a similar way to an answering machine. The person you're sending mail to doesn't have to be connected at that time. They can collect their mail when they next connect to the internet, whether it's within five minutes or five days. Elizabeth is using one particular email software package, but the window for sending a message is fairly standardized across all packages and types of computers. The From box contains your own email address. Most software will fill this in automatically after you've used it once. There will always be a box for the email address of the person you're mailing to, a subject box, and an area for you to type the message in. While this particular message is being typed, the computer is not connected by phone. This is called preparing a message offline. When I press the send button, the message disappears, but it's actually been put in an out box. Once I reconnect, called going online, I can send the message from the out box. Preparing and reading messages offline saves a lot of money. It's a hell of a lot cheaper. What you do is you load the person's message to you onto your computer, it takes a few seconds to download it onto your machine. You can sit there and type a reply and you're normally, their message will have several different points in it and you copy those into your reply, answer them individually under each little bit of text and you can keep several different threads of a conversation going and then it takes just a few seconds to load that machine, uh, to load that message from your machine onto the net and download it onto there so you can have quite a long discourse and it only takes seconds of phone time. Another useful feature of most email packages is the signature block. This isn't a handwritten signature, it's a block of typewritten text giving your details. Or it could even be a picture made out of letters. Okay, and there you see it's appended my signature block. It's a five line signature block. Um, Sometimes people would just have two lines for their details and then they'd put a little advertising sales message. I prefer um, not to advertise at all on the net 
the little chunk at the bottom is someone's signature, which is simply a, a file that is stuck to the bottom of every email or newsgroup post that they send out to the world. Another way of personalising messages is by using smileys. It's a way of livening up and personalising your messages because text can be quite dry. If you put a colon on the screen and you put a closed bracket next to it, if you try and imagine what that would look like, turn it on its side, you've got a smiley face. Um, and it's a way of taking the sting out of a sarcastic comment or a way of showing that you're laughing at someone's jokes. Um, you can do all sorts of little faces. If you use a semicolon instead of a colon, you get, and turn that on its side, you get a smiley face that looks like it's winking. There are many variations on this, including the uh, sunglasses smiley. Or if you're perhaps not feeling so happy today. Or perhaps worried. There are many, many thousands of these. It just a matter of choosing the right one for the occasion. In the same way that a telephone can be bugged, electronic mail can be intercepted. Data that goes over the internet is mostly free text at the moment. However, there's a possibility to encrypt that data. And what that means is jumbling it up in such a way that to, to the only people who can decipher it are the two ends that are meant to be speaking to one another. Right? So that means that even if someone captures your data as it goes over the wire, there's no way for them to understand what you, what's actually going on. The other major issue for all companies, whether they be publishers or businesses, is taking credit card transactions online. It's vital to all of us from the standpoint of being able to take small tickets from $10 up or £10 up. Um, and it has to be secure. It has to be secure not just for the actual reason that you don't want people hacking in and getting credit card information, but it has to be secure from the standpoint of the user being comfortable that they are doing a transaction with someone that isn't going to involve them in any risk. So there is an encryption system in place that will be available from December of 1994, so that whole area has, be, has been taken care of. Something like 70% of all activity on the internet is electronic mail, and that's going to be like that for a long time in my opinion. Many internet users prefer to use electronic mail and refer to the normal mail as snail mail. It's easier than actually sending mail. It's the 90s. People don't use mail anymore.